Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of Chasing Pep, in which we take FM19 this year and we try to recreate Pep Guardiola's tactical style and try to chase him down in the Hall of Fame. This year, my friends, we have something different. Number one, video-only series. The first year, uh, written series. Written word is my format of choice. Does that make sense? Traditionally, uh, second year, tried video almost instantly a disaster my laptop didn't run obs and fm combined uh had to try and match audios with a quick time play that was all laggy it was just not fun it was a mess for me it was a mess to watch so i went i got a new computer i got a usb mic so i have to try and match audio levels with video um what else did i do uh webcam that's new uh, so people can see see reactions, which is important, and football manager, I think, uh, less so for this talking to you stuff, and more so for watching games that's, uh, that's fun. Um, what is new? What is different? Uh, same character as always. If you are new to the series, new to the channel, which almost every single person will be, this is Francisco Lapello. He is, to all intents and purposes, ostensibly a Pep Guardiola knockoff. He has the same hair. He has the same... Uh, lovely stubble. He is from Catalonia. He is younger. This is Pep. If Johan Cruyff was not manager at Barcelona at the time Pep Guardiola was coming through, he would have been booted out for not being physical enough, not being fast enough, yada, yada, yada. He would have got kicked out of La Masia as a young boy. So we have Francisco. This year is also different for two reasons. One, I am not starting off a particular club. Uh, the first year I went to New York City FC because it was um, twi- because it's twinned with Manchester City and Pep was there, um, and that I started an employee, but that was the first job that came up. Uh, last year I started at Man United because of the cross town rivalry with Pep. I thought it'd be fun. I could get to the tactic better and faster. But this year we are going full journeyman. We are starting as a semi-professional footballer, and we are going to enter the job market. And it's going to be a start from the bottom, now we're here type situation. Now, I'm not sure, we'll get into this as, as the series goes on, about the tactical style, how well the, the, it can be implemented this year as opposed to last year, what has changed from the last couple of years to this one um, in terms of the tactical setup. I know they've overhauled the tactical interface. I'm not sure how much it is different actually playing the game and stuff. Um, so, so we'll look into that. And then the big thing is, of course, we're going to be starting out in... The Scottish Second Division or the Uruguayan Second Division or somewhere in the middle of Ukraine or Switzerland and God knows what type of football you can get those guys to play at least right off the bat until I overhaul the squads but that will be part of the fun my friends is going to these backwaters going into Mordovia in the middle of Russia or the far east of Russia Mordovia I think it's like not quite Serbian um, but it's way over that end. Going into places like that, I think, will will be fun. So, let's check out the leagues. Um, we got loaded up. We got the two Argentinian leagues. I've really been enjoying in a private save playing in Uruguay. That's lots of fun. South America is bonkers. It's so much. You have with these weird games where you play at home one week and you get 5,000 people and you're not sure why. And you play at home the next week and there's 70,000 people in the stadium and everybody bought 35,000 people each both sets of fans it's um it's wild and fun uh so we got argentina two austrian divisions two belgian divisions two brazilian divisions i didn't want to put brazil c in because there's something a bit weird with i have all the um the real names the uh badge packs the face packs all that stuff this is a, a different skin as well which i'll post in the description but for some reason, Brazil, I think they, they must have changed the IDs or something of copying this stuff over because it's not quite implemented and the the C divisions are a bit of a mess. Um, England down to League 2. I didn't want to go any lower because I don't really want to start in England. Uh, France down to the 3rd Division. France could be fun. Germany down to the 3rd Division. That would be fun. A couple of Greek divisions. Um, Serie A, Serie B. Two Mexicans. I've never managed in Mexico. So managing in the 2nd Division of Mexico would be fun. Uh, two Dutch divisions, um, two Portuguese divisions, Russia, four Scottish divisions. I don't know why I did that. I would only really want to go 
championship upwards at some point, maybe. Uh, but I guess I think I did that just so that we had enough bad divisions to start with. Um, two Spanish divisions. Two Swiss divisions I would very much like to manage in Switzerland at some point. Two Turkish divisions I would love to manage in Turkey at some point. Uh, two Ukrainians, and as I mentioned, the two Uruguayan divisions. Um, I'm managing Nacional, Nacional in the private safe. So to start at a terrible second division Uruguayan club would be a lot of fun to uh, juxtapose against uh, juxtapazos, whatever, against uh, managing Nacional, which is what, them and Penarol, the two big sides in Uruguay. I'm scratching my neck because I don't know entirely which one will be considered bigger. And I know someone will take great offense to me not knowing exactly which one has is bigger. Um, I think Nacional has the biggest supporter base. Um, so as you load it up at the moment, the only open jobs that we would have any shot at is this Albion Rovers second division job, which is the single worst job, I believe, in the second division. Yeah, they were relegated from above. They must be in all kinds of financial distress. Um, Lord knows. So I think what I'll do is... Um, I'll just apply all, why not? Um, why, why? This is an amazing game this year. All the little things they've done to improve the game are so appreciated. Um, why on earth they still have the job center where you can... I mean, they did so many little things they never even advertised because they were for the real hardcore player where you'd only notice it if you played you know, 90 hours a week or whatever nonsense you can play. And... They still have it where you have goalkeeping coaching the jobs. I can't be. I would love to have a chance of being a director of football. That'd be really fun, um, you know, for a season or two until you got bored of it. But why they leave all this stuff in, I have no idea. Uh, so let's just apply all. Obviously, we will get none of these jobs. I am annoyed that they didn't do like a day off release to um, update the Real Madrid job, just because it, it, it instantly. I promise you. I'm click continue. I promise you, Allegri will get that job, and then Conte will get the Juventus job. Uh, that's just the way it goes, and it just spoils the realism a little bit um, in year one. But we are a billion miles from the top, of the top, of the top. The big thing about this challenge is the style of football is number one. Can we try and get the team to play? Like, it's the Barcelona Pep style that I always try and implement. There will be some of the buying stuff, more inverted fullbacks, more half space stuff. There will be some city stuff where it's more of a, of a two man roaming uh, middle and much, much wider up front. Um, so, while and not so much with the false nine style. So, I'll, I will have elements and bits and pieces of that depending on the team. But when we get to the pinnacle of the pinnacle, it will be about trying to redo the Barcelona 09, 10, 11. Um, just the the axis of Busquets and yes to Xavi, Messi, and then pick your whoever you want from Villa and Pedro and so on. Um, uh, so that's uh, we'll get into that in more detail when we have a team and we can look at the tactics and look how terrible the squads are going to be. Oh god, it's going to be rough to start with. Um, uh, oh, that's the other thing is that chasing Pep is obviously hard. Uh, duh. He's already the second most successful manager in terms of Hall of Fame score. He's at uh, the uh, best team in the country right now, so he should really win another league title. He should win a Champions League. The big thing that's happened when I've done this challenge the last couple of years is that Pep is so poorly implemented into the game. His style is so bland and basic that his teams do terribly and he almost always gets sacked and he always ends up at Liverpool or another or Atletico Madrid and gets sacked again and then just kind of disappears sometimes into international management but doesn't really do much after that so there's a chance that could happen but I got a feeling from just I played an Ajax save on the beta and I'm playing that national save now and it just feels like pass and move football just that raw element pass move is way better implemented way more successful I think when SI decides to put in uh, presets of Tika Taka and Vertical Tika Taka, I believe they're called, um, which would drive Pep bonkers, by the way. But we can get to that another time. Um, when you put those in as presets, you've got to think that they're, that they're going to be at least solid or solid uh, bases with which to build from. And when you have a solid base and you get given De Bruyne a silver so on, he probably will rack up a couple of Premier League titles. But we'll, we'll keep following as we go. It's a long way to go. It's going to take years and years. Um, 
and we're going to be starting at the bottom of, of the you couldn't you know we're not going to be able to start any lower than we are um so i will come back when there is a possible job i guess all right so we have our first job offer it is indeed the albion rovers job um it doesn't really appeal to me i do love their badge um their kits are solid which is big i actually i do not like the <laughs> red accents on the yellow that third kit is fire uh, red with the yellow accents not terrible is jay is that giacomo what is that i've never seen that before um 1882 so it's like an old club it's semi-pro jock steen was there that's kind of cool that would be kind of cool to start out where i'm guessing he started out or was he a player there i'd have to look into it but i just i, I feel like we're doing a journeyman that you should probably start in like Again, the Ukrainian second division, Switzerland, Russia, you know, Argentina, somewhere further afield than Scotland. Five and twenty-five quid a month, eleven months. We would be in then for the South American managerial cycle. Mm, I just, you know, when you just get that feeling like you're just not feeling it, that a job just comes up and you're like, that's the one. I, I have no feelings like that at all for the Scottish second division, at least at this point, if we bomb out somewhere else, then maybe, um, but yeah, it just, it just doesn't appeal to me, so I'm going to keep continuing, we will, we will find a job, oh, so close, we had a job interview with Miramar Mislones, Mislones, uh, they are at the foot of the second division in Uruguay, and I thought we had a chance just because there's not much lower divisions in the database. And I thought the game would take that into account. The job interview was funny. The gem was like, so you've like never managed a football club before. Like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I just think I'd be good at it. I, I just think I could do it. Um, they liked the vision for the club. Um, but I got rejected. So I think at this point, the best thing I can do, because that is the lowest of the lows you can really go in Uruguay, uh, which is where most of the jobs have come open. There's been some second division Brazilian teams. We have just no shot at those right now. Um, uh, Oriental de la Paz, I actually declared interest in them. I did some of that chicanery and tried to like push their manager out. Obviously, no one's ever heard of me, so no one cared. Uh, and the fans laughed it off, which means we, we just haven't really got much of a shot, though. So I think the best thing we can do is... Uh, continue until around uh, October, November, and when the European sacking cycle comes in, it's probably going to have to be a Russian second division or Ukrainian second division team, I think. I don't want to go as a B team, I did Barcelona B last year, but any of these Russian second division teams, let's keep an eye on those, their season's just underway. Give it another 10 games or so, and hopefully some of these teams will start sacking their managers. And I am not above going into the interview and just lying and being like, hey, look, I will get you top half finish if they think we're going to get relegated. Just get in the door in the first job. Hope it works. Try and get the reputation, get some coaching courses. That is the plan. So I will come back when we have a job interview, job offer or something. So we have taken a ton of interviews. Let me check my notes. We have had... Tombov in Russia, we have had Tork in Uruguay, we've had Zerka in Ukraine, we got Mordovia in Russia, I just mentioned them, and I just interviewed with Mordovia, all of them turned me down, but we do have a job offer, and it is interesting to say the least, it is Sibir, Novos is, Novos Ibersk, wait, oh that's the guy, no, Oh, that's the stadium is called Sparta. I got confused there, Moscow. I understand Sparta doesn't mean Moscow. I got confused. Um, they've offered me a job. They are a Russian team in the second division of Russia. They are above Mordovia, who turned me down. They are above Tambov, who turned me down. They are 14th in the league. It is an interesting job. Now, I cannot see any of the players. That's a problem. These face packs are all. Awesome. How does someone even find the face packs? They just go through the team's official website, I guess. Oh, Jesus. Uh, he's 24? That seems suspicious. 
Um, so I like the the badge is kind of strange. It's like green and white with an eagle, some form of bird. Now they were predicted to finish eighth, so this should be a competitive team. Uh, the Russian division, I think only one goes up in that playoff for something different. Um, five foreign players, uh, no more than three. No more than five foreign players in the playing 11 playoff matches. No more than three foreign players. So is it three or five? Three from 12. Oh, I like when you have a giant subs bench. That's great. Maximum of five players. So I'm guessing you can have five players in the squad, three on match day. Um, uh, da, 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 where are we? Sabir. Sabir, I can say that. I just can't say the full, full name. Uh, oh, there's a transfer man. Ooh, insecure finances. That's annoying because in Russia, sometimes you get these oligarchs who own like lower division teams, and you know, you can get some decent cash even when you think it says okay. But by a Russian standard, sometimes that can be pretty good. I do like that they have Angie Matlakarka as a competitive rival. I do like that they're around from 1934 because a bunch of these Russian teams are, you have some from like the early 19 whatever, and then you have like 2011, 2007, just because the you know the formation of the league and so on. Uh, so I like that it's an old team with some history. The club itself, is there anyone interesting in the favor of personnel and icons? Uh... That's the manager of the B team. He's a legend. Why would you not just appoint him? You ask yourself. That is an assistant manager. I might bring him with me. Kits are nice, I guess. I don't know why is that blue a different color than that blue. Wouldn't you just make... If you're just going to have plain kits white, wouldn't you make it the same blue, the color of the team? Maybe go with some of this green that's up here that's very nice. Stadium... Not the best picture for the stadium. I have no idea how these people find the background images for the stadium. That's wild. Um, but they have been in... Have they been up in the first division? Were they not allowed in for some reason? But they finished second and it says promotion. Oh, they were. Then they went straight back down. Okay. So they've been there in the last eight years. Um, this one is interesting. I think I'm going to delay it. Just because there are some other jobs that I've applied for that are interesting. There's this Ukrainian one. This Turkish second division one. This one is interesting. I like the idea of Turkish stadium looks terrible. <laughs> that stadium is terrible. Um, that one seems interesting. Russian second division, Turkish second division. There's a couple more um, Russian ones here. This Balkany Zoya. In the Ukrainian second division. That's interesting. Um, that one. That can't be a real picture of a 1600 seater stadium. 442 classic. Found in 2007. Very new. Um, I feel like the Russian second division is better than the Ukrainian second division. Does that seem right? 21? Um, and then we have Bologna in France. Which I, I want to manage in France at some point. I would love to take a team from like the second division to the into like the Europa League in the French leagues. I think you could make that jump. Um, Frank Ribery's a legend. Interesting. Um, I'd bring him back as an assistant manager, but you know, some stuff in his past that might not be great. Um, terrible kits. Um, interesting. Stay fifteen thousand seat stadium. Why is that not attached to that? That must be a like fake stand they put up for the day. I don't know. So I think I got a shot at getting this one. They were supposed to finish seventh in the third division. They're struggling right down there at 16th. But not too far off being able to bounce really quickly. Um, so that's interesting. So we got the French third division. We got the Ukrainian second division. We got this actual job offer in the Russian second division. I'm going to delay this for a week and then let's see what we get from France and from Ukraine. We didn't get the job in the French third division, so I'm going to go ahead and take this Sibir job, Sibir job in Russia. The uh, the other jobs that are open that I took interviews for, I'm not favorites for any of them. 
the two of them are in the Russian. I would like that Turkish job. That'd be fun to go to Turkey, and we have to do that at some point. Uh, but this guy is just, I mean, look at that. <laughs> that guy's the favorite. I mean, we just got no chance. Um, so I'm going to take this job. Let's do it. Uh, no idea about this club. I will do some research. Uh, next episode, we'll do like a full breakdown of the squad and what the team looks like. Uh, for now, we'll just quickly do some of this stuff. Uh, yeah, give me some more history. Meet the journalist sound. Um... I'll speak to the staff in due course. Uh, know all this, know all this. Tactics. We'll definitely get into this at some point. Um, I don't know whether to start with straight off the bat the Tika Attacker and get the peps of rolling right away or just try and win some games. I've just noticed something. <laughs> we don't have a game for 101 days. Ugh, we're in the middle of the the Russian winter break, of course. Of course. I mean, at least it's like having a preseason, I guess, and we can come back and survive relegation and add some players. Uh, I've seen a lot online people saying in terms of the tactics that the Gagan press and Tik Tak are overpowered, which I can't figure out whether it's like, are they, you know, just the, the, the regular setups, the way SI have programmed that really well built for the match engine, or is it just that if you play Gage and Press and Tiki Taka well with good players, they are inherently excellent tactics? Like, if you are counter-pressing someone with good players, it's a really good system. It's how Dortmund topples Bayern Munich. It's how Klopp beats Guardiola in the Champions League semi-final and stuff. And Klopp has consistently beat Guardiola. So I'm not so sure if it's necessarily that these are overpowered. More so that just the, the tactical philosophies are really good if you have good players. Um... I'll, I'll get to that because we'll go through the squad. Uh, and I think I'll go through all these guys next episode. Just take a quick look. Uh, some old guys. Are the people set to leave? There's guys in the transfer list. Uh, clearly, we're going to need some kind of an overhaul. The team's in the relegation zone. Um, Victor Svezov is the top man. That's not bad. Mazella, he's been there before. He left. Uh, deep line playmaker so I'll have a look through this uh, we'll go through it all next time um, who's our first game coming back ooh big team away from home maybe we just play long football to begin with or at least how, look how many away games there are I mean we, okay this is, oh my god does Sochi play at the actual Sochi stadium are you kidding me that's crazy um, <laughs> like a, oh, they were founded in 2018 for uh, the World Cup. That's crazy. Uh, good job by them, I guess. Um, okay, I think that'll do it for this episode. We are at the club. There is very little history, given that we've been around since 1934. You think, given that we've got teams like Sochi who've just been created, there would be some more success. Um, but we are here with the Eagles. Siba, Novosibirsk, Bursk, Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk. We have a transfer ban, which I just forgot about until the 2nd of February. So we may not even be able to buy players, which means we're definitely going to have to be more counter-attacking, more defensive, because we clearly don't have very good players. Owner loves the club, that's good. Two band average ticket price, 2,000 to ticket holders, that's good. Facilities, a nice 5,000 seater stadium. Giant. Look at that, built in 1927, rebuilt in 1956. They have done diddly squat to it since then with synthetic turf. I mean, again, that counts as an upgrade, I guess. Um, all right, that'll do it for this episode. Welcome back to Chasing Pep. I'm very excited for this series. I think it's going to be a ton of fun to go from these lower leagues of Russia and build up and up and up. One day, I do want to manage one of Munich or Barcelona, not really City. Okay, so that'll do it. Very excited to be back. Speak to you next